But the way we can, uh, the only way we can show our neighbor in Relative Christ is to get to know our neighbor. So uh, welcome all those. If it's your first time, I'm Pastor Duran. Um, for those who keep on coming, please keep on coming, keep on inviting, because we want to not only show our neighbor, we want to show the world that Christ is good. Amen? Amen. Uh, well, let's go, go ahead and hop into the announcements. Uh, John Alex has been sober now for 90 days. That was last week. I think it was like 97 days. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, um, still need a John, come find me if you could come and get, let me take a picture of you. We'll look, put you on there and just honor the Lord for what he is doing in your life. We are also uh, grateful and thankful to the Lord that was uh, giving Maddie a promotion at her job. That is amazing. And uh, Pastor Mike, I don't know why this is a phrase, but it still sounds pretty cool. You know, I'm excited for Pastor Mike. He's been summoned to jury duty next Monday. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, yeah. I, I think you would rather not go to jury Some duty. Or like, like it. Probably like the rest of us hoping his number, his number gets called, you know. But uh, I think that is the phrase. You guys don't know about Pastor Mike. You know, he serves the time. And, you know, but, but, but he, he did what he had to do. And now not only is he serving the church, but now the state's trying to get him to serve him. Or to serve them, right? That's, a, that, that's awesome. But, you know, we, uh, we love you, Pastor Mike. And we're excited for you to go ahead and do some jury duty. And then also, uh, well, like I said, this is the praise and the prayers, but, you know, the Lord took Roberta home, and we're going to be praying for her sons. There's the youngest one named Michael. This was our sister Christine's best friend. So it's, uh, it's very sad, but at the same time, it's a praise because she knew the Lord, and she's home in heaven. And, you know, that that is a, one of those things we always say is, if you know where they're at, it's not lost. Right? You, you ain't lost nothing if you know where, it's, where they're at. And then also, uh, we're thankful to the Lord that he spared Rosella from surgery, but we're also going to be praying at the Elsa at the tail, and that um, uh, he restores her appetite and her weight. Yes. So so we're going to continue, and there's a, a little picture of her family right there, and God will, we'll see them a little bit later. And then, uh, man, look what the Lord is doing in this young lady's life. Taliana got uh, straight A's, you know, like, you know, maybe. <laughs> And we'll even celebrate straight A's and a B, you know, if you got that. So you let us know if you're, uh, if you guys are uh, just proud of your kids and uh, their accomplishments. We love putting them up here because, like, again, we're trying to get to know each other so we can do life together. Uh, talk about doing life together. Look at this uh, young man, John, right here. Um, he has uh, been blessed with a job at a nursing home and a new apartment. Thank you, Lord. And then uh, this young lady, she got a tooth yanked out. Again, I don't know why this is a praise. I guess it's because it's, uh, she's feeling better now. But I'm like, ooh, my tooth get pulled, up, uh, pulled out. I don't even want to talk about it. But uh, Annalise got her tooth pulled uh, Friday, and she's feeling a whole lot better. Now hopefully she uh, does, or just grows back and you don't eat as many candies, right? <laughs> I have eaten. You have eaten candies? <laughs> but no, uh, um, I like I like the mask too. That, that's that's quite entertaining right there. And then there's a little picture of her tooth that I got pulled out. But you know maybe the tooth fairy will come by and give you a dollar. You know what I mean? That'd be amazing. But is a dollar even amazing anymore? But your kids they're like they're like I better get more than a dollar. I got a dollar. I was like man this is amazing. You know I'm gonna go buy me a candy bar. Now you can't buy nothing. Um, Aaron's first field day, so we wanted to uh, just you know keep on you know, commemorating all the things that these kids are doing. Here's um, Santos right here at his first t-ball game is having a good old time in kindergarten and we also got Ben doing his fun run and we got this little man Miguel he came and joined us last week that was amazing you know, he's just, uh, you know he's, always, he's always looking too cool for school I like it you know he comes in but we're also just super um, thankful to the Lord and what he's doing in Miguel's grandma's life which is eight months uh, sober now and that's just uh, very good. Thank you, Jesus. And then Victor, uh, Victor Hernandez, he received his 50-year Transit Union membership card. 50 years of faithful service. Look at that. And, I was like, hey, and then, uh, you know, I knew it was a special occasion when I saw Nate Jr. over here. And this is actually, I'm not trying to embarrass him, but just a little bit because his dad sent us all kinds of photos. So this is Nate Jr. and it's his 21st birthday today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, we're proud of the man who become Nate. Happy birthday. And then, of course, we have actually a plethora of birthdays this month. I mean, 
right here is Juliana's uh, seventh birthday. She's on the 15th. And then Jemima's here, she turned seven as well. It's her with Diego. Well, he didn't turn seven, but it's his birthday. And then we can't forget Bruce, because he'll like yell at the back of the church about it. <laughs> And so did Gary. I'm just kidding. He was saying his buddy Gabe birthday was this month. And he wanted to make sure Last we acknowledge Gabriel. September. But I mean, huh? Those were all in September. Oh, is it October already? Oh, man. So I guess that's the first October birthday. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's funny. I can't believe it's already October. Yep. You know what that means? That means uh, fall fiesta is right down the road. I don't know if you guys, we don't do like trunk or treat or anything over here, but we do a fall fiesta. And this year is going to be amazing because we're going to do a field day. So invite your kids because we're going to try to get ribbons and everything. Like first, second, third, you know, they're going to be, huh? Uh, <laughs> you know, I think it's going to be a good day and good time. So we do a fall fiesta on October, which I can't believe it's already October. Where did the year go? What, what an amazing year to be able to share it with you guys. Um, prayer requests. Uh, we, we, we love to celebrate with you guys, we love to pray with you guys, but we love to pray for you guys and pray with you guys. So one of the things, um, my brother actually just walked in, I haven't seen John in a while, but um, his brother was, Cruz just got hit on a motorcycle and he needs prayer for healing. And then, um, of course, we want to pray for John because he needs strength and healing as well. And then uh, this family's uh, kind of gone through the ring here. I don't know if you guys have met Ben and Crystal, but they got these lovely uh, young lady, Sophia. Can't think of the older girl's name right now, but um, when they are here, they're such a blessing to us. But Crystal lost her father yesterday. He went home to be with the Lord. And then on top of that, Ben was getting three teeth pulled. So, I mean, they just, they had a rough uh, couple days. So we want to pray for this family, Ben and Crystal and their girls. And then Tammy, we're going to continue to lift her up and all her um, other employees as they're um, they're, they're trying to figure out if they're going to still have the jobs as they have, have a new company moving in and they had to reapply to have their old jobs. So that's a scary thing when you work for a place for so long and they say we need a new application essentially to see if we still want you. So we're praying for her, her and her whole uh, staff, everybody that's involved in this uh, new management. Then we're continuing to pray for Noni and just be thankful to the Lord that um, he has, uh, he's given her peace. And he has family that's surrounding her and reminding her of who God is, but she still needs a miracle. So, so we're going to pray for that miracle. And then um, we actually were praying for her. Um, Michelle will be doing better than I saw her last week, right? That's amazing. So, so, we're, so the Lord is healing, but we're still going to pray for uh, complete restoration. And then and so I wish she uh, is able to get to doing everything she wants. She definitely wants to pray for uh, her son and the other little boy that we prayed about. Um, for a long time, you know, she, you guys all know the situations if you've been privy to it, but she's just, for her whole family, she just needs support. And then, uh, Brian, we're still praying for your wife that she's uh, going to be doing, feeling better with her ankles. I know that's, uh, or her foot, actually. You know, it's, it's never easy, you know, when something is hurting, but it's been just, after surgery, it's still going. So we're just praying for complete healing, and that way she's able to join us. Uh, God willing, by the fall fiesta, because him and her are supposed to be grilling our burgers and hot dogs. You know what I mean? <laughs> but also, we just miss them. And then, uh, oh, we're also just continuing to pray for Dominic's family. It's been a couple of weeks since he went home to be with the Lord. Uh, Forty years old, left a son and a daughter, some grandkids, and you know, we just uh, want to pray for them and just ask the Lord to come and comfort them and to come near them, for he draws near to the brokenhearted. And then also we're just going to continue to pray for our sister T's health and family. She's going through a lot in this time, so we want to, you know, come alongside her and pray with her through it. And then we're also going to continue to pray for Bonnie as uh, she's uh, she had one of her roughest weeks last week going through um, the, some uh, treatments. I think it was uh, red blood cells white. that she, huh? White. Or white blood cells, the ones that help you fight infection. They had to, she was producing enough, so they were injecting them into her, and it just wasn't, wasn't pleasant. So, so we want to pray for comfort for her and strength as well. And then we're going to continue to pray for Mean Street Ministry that they are able to find a facility to facilitate all their needs in their growing uh, ministry. And then, of course, we can't forget about Lakewood and just all the ongoings in this nation that we have been privy to uh, be a part of. So if you guys could all bow your heads and open your hearts, we're going to take uh, all these matters before the Lord. 
Uh, Lord Jesus, Father God in heaven and earth, first and foremost, I want to thank you for who you are and what you're doing. Lord, we know that you, all the time you are good and you are good all the time. Lord, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be with one another, to have life with one another, and to pray for one another. Lord, we want to uh, lift up Roberta's family and, and, and her little son and, and both her sons included as they have lost their mom and they're just you know they're, they're feeling the sting of loss lord but we just pray that through this time you come closer and you provide somebody to surround them and remind them that you are good and that you are with them lord lord we pray for um cruz uh, um, right now that he gets healing lord we don't know who hit him lord but that's not important now what's important is him uh getting better lord so we just pray that you give him strength and you're able to uh, help him recover quickly lord we also pray for john and we just pray that you give him strength and healing lord that you deliver him from anything that is ailing him lord uh there's a, such a blessing to see him here with us today lord i just pray that he continues to come and uh, join the flock lord and to be a part of this uh new life in christ church lord we um, want to lift up crystal and her family lord we, we pray that ben is feeling better already from uh, the procedure he had with his teeth but that crystal and her brother freddie that they're that they are right now supporting one another that they're being comforted that they are finding peace that surpasses understanding lord that um, you are drawing near to them as their hearts are breaking for the loss of their father lord but we know our loss is your gain and um He's home with you right now, Lord, smiling down on us in heaven. Lord, we um, continue to pray for Tammy and all our co-workers, Lord, that everyone that reapplies for their job gets their job back, Lord, and that they are, I mean, maybe they have better management, Lord, that um, hires them back and that they um, are blessed by this new um, endeavor that is happening in their company. Um, Lord, we continue to pray for Noni and for a miracle in her life, Lord. She is um, suffering from serious cancer, Lord, and we just uh, pray that uh, there's there's healing, Lord, that they find uh, either through your providential okay. power a cure, Lord, or that you just come and cure yourself, Lord. Lord, um, thank you for helping Michelle with her healing in her ankles, Lord. But we also just pray for her family, Lord, those those young boys that she's just wanting to take care of and guide her daughter, Lord. And just uh, keep giving her the strength to show up and show out, Lord. Lord, we pray for healing for our sister Sarah, Lord. We pray that uh, through her husband, Brian, that she is able to be encouraged and to be able to uh, get motivated, Lord, to get back out there and to enjoy life. Lord, we um, continue to pray for Dominic's family, Lord, for Bernadette and Felicia, and for um, his, his son, his daughter, Lord, that they um, are able to uh, come to a closer relationship with you, Lord, for they, um, they I know they miss Dominic greatly, Lord, but they, 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 come, they take comfort in the fact that he is home with you in heaven. Um, Lord, we pray for Tina. We haven't uh, got the chance to uh, see her last week, so we pray we get to see her soon, Lord. But as she is at home, just getting better, Lord, we pray that you uh, help her recover fully, Lord. We pray for her and her whole family as a whole, for they are going through many tribulations, Lord, but help them to overcome all these things. Um, Lord, we continue to uh, lift up Miguel, Lord, and just uh, pray for him and just... Uh, ask for healing for him and his life, Lord, that he is able to just continue to grow stronger and stronger daily. Um, Lord, we um, pray for comfort and strength for Bonnie as she is getting these treatments, Lord, that we pray that these treatments are working and that we'll be able to celebrate with her when this cancer is gone. Lord, we pray for Mean Street and ask that you bless their ministry and you bless where they're at, Lord, that you find them a place to go that will uh, bless them tremendously, Lord, where they'll be able to continue to serve and bless those whom they um, do life with, Lord. Lord, we, um, we pray for Lakewood, Lord. We pray that the people that are on the streets, Lord, that are um, right there on the path, Lord, that are not seeing the hope that is you, Lord, has the veils lifted from their eyes and they realize that there is hope in you, Lord, that there is there is not only hope, but there is there's a God who loves them and cherishes them, Lord. They just need but to surrender and give themselves over to you, Lord. Lord, we pray as this uh, 
uh, this uh, season in our country, um, as, as uh, it's an election season, and there's things going on, Lord, that people actually just uh, use this time to to glorify you, Lord, that we act accordingly as ambassadors of heaven and show them that we love our neighbor as we love ourselves, Lord. More important, we love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So, Lord, we just, uh, oh, we also want to lift up uh, Rosalia, Lord, to you, that she uh, regains her appetite, Lord, and gains her weight back. Yeah. Lord, but there's so many unspoken prayers, Lord. So we pray for all those unspoken prayers and give them all over to you. And pray it's all in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much. And then uh, if I could actually have you guys uh, get up, we do the Lord's Supper first Sunday of every month. So if you guys uh, want to make a line right here down the aisles, I'm going to go through our last our last announcements as you do that. And then the ladies will hand to you guys the, the cup. And somebody actually blessed us with... Um, I mean, like, uh, it's a juice pack with the wafer. Like, it's all, it's like, express. It's amazing, right? Like, I was like, I didn't even know the baby. So we're going to try these out, see if you guys like them. But if you guys come up and get the Lord's Supper, uh, just a reminder, if it's your first time, fill out a connection card. We would love to just know that you guys came and joined us. If you have a prayer or a praise, fill out the other side. Um, please silence your mobile phones so then that way it doesn't disrupt the service. Um, Wednesday night, Bible study, 6 p.m. Thursday, there's a men's Bible study, 6.30 p.m. And on uh, Friday, there's also a women's Bible study at 6 p.m., room 208. Now, they're all in room 208. That's why I said it that way. So you guys, if you guys want to get connected, get with one of the pastors or one of the elders, we'll love to tell you about it. And don't forget, it's October 27th, Fall Fiesta Field Day. It's going to be amazing. And uh, we'll be blessed to have a good time with you guys. I can have Jack come up here to bless the Lord's Supper. You guys got it? Do you help us? service to get our to get our snow bread. You can't figure it out, Bruce said you come help you out. I'm trying to do Bruce's. This isn't working. These were offered to Pastor Duran just this morning. Uh, somebody came by and he thought we'd give it a try. <laughs> but it's a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> but free is hard to resist. Aren't you guys? As we do this sacred event together, what's the big deal about it? Jesus and his disciples are gathered together around the dinner table 2,000 years ago, remembering Passover. 
they are reminding themselves about when a sacrificial lamb's blood protected them from judgment in Egypt. A huge event. And in the middle of the dinner, Jesus replaces Passover with a new dinner. This one. Because he is the ultimate sacrificial lamb, will bleed for their sins and ours the next day so completely and permanently that it will eliminate the need for any more Passovers. All our mistakes, all of our oversights, omissions, meanness, selfishness, every one of the things we've said, thought, or done, or will say, think, or do. No more Passover meals instead. This. And he's telling his disciples back then, and his disciples now, keep having this meal until the day that I come back. And so let's repeat those same words he said that night when he made this new meal. And while they're eating, he took some bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. And if you'd eat those crackers as well as you can. And when he'd taken a cup and given thanks, he gave that to them. And they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I say to you, I will never drink it again until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Of God. Amen. Thank you, Jack. If you guys take this time to uh, go and you know, walk around and see how everybody's doing, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you. God bless. And don't forget, you can take your kids and check them in the nursery. Uh, I'm 
Sisters, I had to look at the juice box and just to make sure everything was uh, correct on there. There was no alcohol in the juices. Uh, can I go ahead and get um, the ladies to get the baskets, please? Um, Heavenly Father, we, uh, we come to you we come to you through your son's name, Jesus Christ. Lord, we want to we wanna thank you for this wonderful day. We want to thank you for each other. And uh, most of all, Lord, we just ask that uh, everyone here just opens up their hearts, opens up their wallets, and just please just give back to this wonderful, wonderful church, Lord, that uh, you're allowing us to, to be here and to, to do your word, Lord. Um, I know sometimes it's hard. Sometimes... Uh, you know, we have bills that we have to pay and, and whatnot, but um, just whatever you can, we deeply appreciate it. And um, if you ever need any assistance or any help, the church is willing to help. If we are able to provide, we will. We thank you. We love you. We love your son. We thank your son for dying for our sins. And uh, we just uh, continue on just uh, serving you, Lord. We'd like to offer this prayer in your son's name, our King, Jesus Christ.
Can we get another round of applause for our morning team? Oh, and uh, give yourselves a round of applause. You guys are following along, even though those lyrics are going like You know, I don't know about you guys, but I find it the most complicated thing ever to do is to sing and clap. It doesn't really make no sense to me. Like, my brain does not work that way. Can you better keep the button for me? Thank you. Um, if you guys could give a round of applause for our brother Martin, he's actually going to do our reading for us today. Let me just go ahead and get this well on. There you go, my brother. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, man, it's not just one thing, it's another. Snug in the bow of your cooker, somebody stole my cooker. I stole your cooker. What? Well, you know, welcome to New Life. This is how we roll, you know? <laughs> just taking pictures from each other, honestly. No, here you go. Thank you so much. I'm going to put it in like this. Good morning. Good morning. Today's reading comes from Mark 5, 35 through 43. While he was still speaking, they came from the house of the synagogue, official, saying, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher anymore? But Jesus, overhearing, what had been spoken, said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, only believe. And he allowed no one to accompany him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And they came to the house of the synagogue official and he saw a commotion and people loudly crying and wailing. And entering in, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and crying? The child has not died, but is asleep. And they began laughing at him. But putting them all out, he took along the child's father and mother and his own companions and entered the room where the child was. And taking the child by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which translated means little girl, I say to you, Oh, arise. And immediately the little girl stood up and began to walk, for she was 12 years old. And immediately they were completely astounded. And he gave them strict orders that no one should know about this. And he said that some food should be given to her to eat. Amen. 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 Praise God, Lord. Thank you so much, my brother. You're welcome, oh, Pastor. Wonderful reading of the Lord's Word. If you guys have been with us for this, for this series, we have titled it The Authority to Serve. For we know the Lord didn't come to be served, but what? To serve. And so as we we're going through the Gospel of Mark, which is the Ashton Gospel, we have been just discovering how Jesus has the authority over so many things. But yet he chose his authority to serve others. Like we, we try to live by that mantle here at New Life in Christ, that if you're a leader, the only thing you get to do is serve. That's because right. the, the more responsibility you have, the more, um, the more you got to lead, right? The more you got to serve, the more you got to support. You know, God doesn't just flippantly give uh, people power. You know, what, what does Peter Parker's uh, uncle say with, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And you know, it's one of those things is we do. But the same power that's in us is the same power that rose Christ Jesus from the dead. Amen. And, we, and what we say matters. What we do matters. That's why we live a life that is not marked on by what we say, but in what we do. We don't want to just tell people about Christ. We want to show them who Christ is in us. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, if you guys were here uh, two weeks ago, it was, a, it was amazing how uh, here, Pastor Mike reminded us that God, he initiates appointments. And, and divine was at that, right? He says, I, I need you to be somewhere. And even though we find a way to try to avoid it, we still end up making that appointment. God still finds a way to put us right where we need to be at that right time. 
You know, with his disciples, right? He, they got in the boat and went to the other side at the behest of their Lord. He said, get in and go. And that's, that's tough to do. But, you know, we want to follow their example. And if God says to go, we want to say, all right, send me. Last week, it was amazing. Pastor Jack reminded us that God isn't nowhere, but actually God is what? Now here. And in this moment that we saw when he was reading the scripture, here's this woman who is just struggling and trying to just find God in her life. And when she finds out that he is there, she, she seeks him out and she, she grabs him. And one of the most amazing things happens is God doesn't get mad at her. He doesn't tell her, how dare you stop me from doing what I got to do. Instead, he, he, he goes to her and says, daughter, you have been restored. And then today, we were just reading the scriptures that uh, Martin blessed us with right there. And Mark, the, the ending of this little, little, little intercept in the Bible, where, where I titled today's message, Arise and Believe. I, I was thinking of this verse in John 6, 40, where it says, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him will have eternal life. And I myself will raise him up on the last day. When we Amen. see Jesus and we believe Jesus, he says he will raise us on the last day. Oh, yes. And we could arise, we need to arise and believe. Yes. Before I get any further, let's just give this time over to the Lord. Let's, let's pray. Lord Jesus, Father God of heaven and earth, Lord, we give this time to you, Lord. This is about you. This is our worship, Lord. Lord, help me to get out of your way. Speak through me, Lord. Lord, open our ears and our hearts. Allow us to not be only hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word, Lord. Lord, we praise all in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Arise and believe, right? And then it's just one of those things where it's easier said than done. I can believe, but sometimes I don't want to get up. I can get up, sometimes I don't believe. <laughs> Right? I mean, is, is there somebody, has somebody ever told you, get up, let's go, and you just feel defeated? I don't know about you guys, but I, I bet about nine times out of, out, out, out of ten, I feel defeated, but God keeps on reminding me, hey, get up, because I'll be with you today. I'll take you where you need to go. Arise, just believe in me, and I'll take you where you need to go. But like I said, we were blessed last week. You know, it was kind of weird because, like, you know, it's one of these things where we did, some people preach these two messages in one because, like, it's, it's, a, it's an instance where it happens so fast. Like I said, especially in Mark, it's just it's the action gospel. It's getting to it. But, like, in this moment where uh, what Jack was preaching, where the woman came in and, and touched the Lord, and, and she just sought him out because she was, what was she, suffering from hemorrhaging. She had a condition where she couldn't stop bleeding, so she essentially was ostracized from society. And, and, and it's just so crazy because she was ostracized from society. It says she was plagued with this disease for 12 years. For 12 years, she's essentially had no life. She just might as well have just been dead. But yet here she just, just takes a leap of hope, right, of faith, and says, as long as I just go to the Lord, and he, he'll restore me, he'll give me life. He, he, he'll bring me back into the fold of where I want to be. But what was going on in this moment, she's risking so much because he's on his way to go and heal a little girl who's about to die. And we find out that amidst all these things that are going on, what the little girl does die. And this little girl, uh, just uh, the Holy Spirit just wanted to let us know, this little girl's 12 years old. The same, the same time frame that she's been inflicted is the same time that this little girl has been alive. And then by her going in and essentially touching people, which she wasn't allowed to touch because she would defile. And by touching Jesus, she would be defiling him. And she could be thinking in herself, I might defile him. He might not be able to do this miracle for this little girl. But her faith and her desperation just trumped it and said, it doesn't matter. I know if anybody can do it, he can, and I'm just going to go for it. And he says, daughter, you have been restored. And he says, it's, it's okay. You, you believed right. You had the faith in the right thing. But before that even transpired, we had this guy, Jairus, as soon as Jesus got out of the boat in verse 21, where he came in and he bowed before the Lord and said, Lord, Lord, my daughter is sick. My daughter is dying. Can you come and save her? Can you come and deliver her? I don't know about you guys, but I have 
three little babies, and I don't know what I would do if, if they, they needed me, and I, and I felt helpless to help them. And that, that, would bring, that would bring not only a man or a woman, does any, anybody to their knees when, when you, you, you feel defeated. Like, you know, no matter what you do, no matter what you've tried, it, it doesn't work. And God says, you know, like, you, he'll bless when we go to him. And here Jairus, he goes to him. He's, he's, a, he's a synagogue official. That means he essentially was in charge of getting things going for worship. Which means he was in charge of most people that were what probably making they they were making sure that nobody was following Jesus. They didn't believe that Jesus was who he said he was. But he goes and throws that all to the side and says, "I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to humble myself and bow before the Lord and ask Him to help us." And then when he goes and does that, man, cool, it all works. Jesus says, "Let's go, we're going." But the problem is, is there's a crowd. There's all these people that want healing too. And on top of the crowd, now there's a woman that stops the whole, the whole parade, the whole, the, whole, um, the whole entourage, right? And it stops it in its tracks. Like if I was Jairus in, in this moment, I would be like, hey, she's cool and I'm sure she needs healing, but you, you need to come with me right now. Time is, time is an issue. If, if we take any more time, we may be too late. Right, like you already pleaded with the Lord, and I mean, I'm sure you don't want to be pushy. Like, right, we don't want to push the Lord into to what is, but we can't help it. We're like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little pushy because this is important to me. She's important. I, I need you to come and rescue her. But you know, he's he, he sees this thing where he just blesses this woman, and now he's probably even more amazed. Like, wow, he just restored this woman right in front of me. But then, as soon as they're on a high of seeing this amazing thing that Jesus does, he gets hit with some bad news that hits him like a ton of bricks. And that's where we started our verses today in verse 35 of chapter 5 of Mark, where it says, While he was still speaking, they came from the house of the synagogue official saying, Your daughter has died. I mean, just think about it. I mean, all these things going on. But should I tell him? Should I, should I let him know that, you know, we need to go? Like, you know, like, um, I'm, I'm glad you're looking for somebody who touched you, but is that really important? My daughter is dying. And then uh, his worst nightmare comes into fruition where now he gets the news that she is dead. And on top of that, the person doesn't have any, you know, they're probably heartbroken. He doesn't have any words of encouragement. He just says, you know what? We, we shouldn't even trouble the teacher anymore. There's no hope. And that's a sad thing because right there, hope is manifested right in front of them in Jesus Christ. I mean, we, 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 we plainly have hope when we read the scriptures. We know people that as lives have been transformed through the Holy Spirit by God's will. And yet we still are, are, are sold uh, a doubt that says that there's no hope. I want to tell you right now, church, there's always hope. There is always hope because why? Because Christ is alive. Christ is willing to deliver you. But we can't help it. We, our hearts, our hearts break, right? I mean, even the disciples uh, in John fourteen, their their hearts are breaking because they're like, Jesus, what do you mean you gotta go? You can't go. You can't leave us. Like, how will we know where to go if you leave? But Jesus says this famous thing in verse one of chapter fourteen of John. It says, "Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. You don't need to be troubled right now because I got you." I'll take care of you. I got this. And it's cool because he does that same thing for a child. He looks at him and, and you know, he, he's overhearing what they're saying. In verse 36, he says, but Jesus overhearing what had been spoken, he said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, only believe. I don't know about you guys, but I, 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 got, I got stuck on that verse. Like, not in a bad way, but that's just the thing that I needed to hear. I, I, I have heard it said once or twice, you know, and, and checked, you know, and it's 365 times this term or a type of this term is in the Bible. It's only going to say, that's once for every day. I don't know, I'll use them all up in one day if it's a really bad day. I mean, how many have been sitting in, a, in an ICU or in, in a hospital just scared of what could happen next? Not only to yourself, maybe to a loved one. 
I mean, you need to read it over and over and not to be afraid to, 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 to just go ahead and trust God. I always believe in God. But kind of like that famous thing is, Lord, I believe, but help me with what? Help me with my unbelief. Because, it, I mean, we, we, we some even know it. We, we know, God, 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 sweet God, God, that I know that everything's going to work out, but still, amidst the storm, what, we were terrified. We're terrified. Why? Because, I mean, life is scary. But what do people say? We're not to live by fear. We're to live by what? Faith. Faith. Faith in Christ. Faith in, faith in what he's going to do, how he's going to deliver us. In Deuteronomy 31, uh, 31, 8, it says, The Lord is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will be faithful to you and will not leave you alone. Do not be afraid or troubled. The Lord is the one who goes before you. The Lord is the one who is with you. He's the faithful one. I think that's why we're scared because I know I, 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 I lack in faith. Why? Because I'm human. But our God doesn't. He's faithful. Even when we are faithless. Even when we are, are struggling. Even when we're not doing our best, he's always at his best. Amen. That's something to hang our hat on. Like even though, even though I'm afraid and I'm troubled, I don't have to be because God will remind me of who he is. He will remind me that as long as I believe in him and, and I've given my life over to him, nothing can happen to me. I mean, in a sense, yes, in the, in the, in the moment, things can happen. You could get hurt, you could feel pain, you could struggle. But the, but the end game is what? The last breath on earth is the first breath in front of my Lord. Amen. Like Christians, we, we don't have a martyr complex or we don't uh, want to die, but we do know when we die, it's a relief from the stresses of this life because we go to be where we always belong in the first place. And that is home with the Lord. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> like, right? I mean, that, 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 that's, that's what scripture says is that well, when we go to heaven, there's no more fear, there's no more tears. There's, yeah. it, it is amazing. But there's something to being here with each other by growing, by being refined in the fire, so to speak. Because, I mean, you're, I don't know about you guys, but every day it seems like it just gets harder and harder as, as things happen. You know, you don't want to turn on the news. I mean, I mean, look at what's going on in Florida. They didn't, they didn't know that they were going to wake up, a, you know, one day and then lose everything. Not only their lives, but their livelihoods. You know, it's just, it is one of those things. And through that storm, I know they're believing, but still it's, it's hard to get up and, and even though you believe and you know. But that's why Jesus reminds us. He says, arise. Get up. I don't know if you guys need to hear that today, but just get up and go. We don't know where God's going to take you, but you're definitely not going to get there if you don't get up. In 37, he says, he, he allowed... No one else to accompany him except Peter, James, and John, and the brother of James. And I, and I think this is a, an amazing moment because he's saying, like, hey, I got to I gotta refine, I got to help them with their doubts because they're going to go through some things. Even his, uh, these are his boys, right? These are his inner circle. They're going to have th times just like we have where they're going to struggle. They're going to they're gonna be knocked on their rear end, essentially. I mean, these are the same three he takes to the hill. And, and it's the, we know it as Jesus' transfiguration where he shows him his glory. Like, I mean, he needs to, uh, he needs to, to make them stronger in their faith because they're going to, they're going to face a lot. Yes. They're, they're, going to, they're going to see some tremendous things in their lives. And this is, one of those, this is one of those things. They're going to see Jesus raise a little girl from the dead. But he says, these other ones, the other people are not going to benefit from it because they're not even coming to me for the right reason. So he, he turns all of them away except for Jairus and his wife and the three disciples. He says, let's go. Because everybody's thinking like, well, we don't need to go no more because she's dead. And that's the wrong attitude to have. We, we, we don't want to throw in the towel before we even went and played. Right? I mean, use that reference because I, I know some of you guys are like, oh, you know, I got to go watch the Bronco Raiders game or whatever's going on. <laughs> but, but, but it says that idea is like, right? Like, if you don't even 
put your cleats on, you never even get onto the field, you're not going to ever get, partake in the actual game. Too many times we want to be spectators and not partake in what God is going to do. Yeah. And the thing is, is he's, he's not going to show you if you don't want to see it. I mean, that's why we do not forsake the meeting of saints. That's why we come together because, yeah, it gets messy. I mean, like, you know, to, to, we come over here and it was a, it's not as smooth as you want, but it's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? <laughs> But we, but we come in here intentionally wanting to see what God is doing in each other's lives because that will build us up. Uh -huh. yeah. That's why we do life together because I don't know about you, but hey, if, I, if I'm doing it on my own, I, it seems quite lonely, right? That's redundant, but it's just lonely when you're doing it alone. When you separate yourself from the flock, you become vulnerable. That's why we come together. And it's because it's the same Holy Spirit that's in you is the same Holy Spirit that's in me. And when two or more are gathered, there you shall be. And we come together and he'll speak to us and he'll tell us what we need to hear and what we need to do. Yes. But many of us, we kind of already kind of exclude ourselves. So he takes those who want to follow him. In this case, he takes the three. Right? James, John, and Peter. And, and like I said, there, there were, there, his three were, they got to go and see this amazing thing where it's Jesus, Elijah, and Moses, and they see him transfigured. In Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 to 2, it says, And six days later, Jesus brought with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up on high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. Imagine seeing that. Imagine just being able to experience that. But we do experience those kind of things when we see God transform somebody right before our eyes. I've seen it when I, I've seen somebody who is completely broken just all of a sudden, not because of anything I did, but because of what the Lord did um, through me or through some scripture we read or whatever was going on, where all of a sudden they walk out just, just healed, restored. God is still doing miracles. I, I still say today, if you're sitting right here and you have been redeemed, you are a miracle. Yeah. That is a miracle is that we can be reconciled to God, to Jesus Christ. In Joshua 1, 9, hey, you're hearing this, this is the theme of today, right? It's, it's do not be afraid, but it says, have I not told you? Be strong and have strength of heart. Do not be afraid or lose faith, for the Lord your God is with you anywhere you go. Have I told you? He's saying, have I not essentially commanded you? That, that, that is one of the things. There's some things that people are like, oh, that's a suggestion. I'm telling you right now, God is not suggesting you. He's telling you, do not be afraid. I know that's easier said than that. I'm telling you guys right now, I'm just scared to tell you. But I shouldn't be afraid to tell you because I, I, I believe it. I believe it. So I'll get up and I'll tell you what I believe. What I'm going to say right now is we do not need to be afraid of what the world has for us, what the devil has for us, or even what our flesh has for us, because we have God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, because when we do have fear, especially in hearts, when we don't have hope, when we think that everything is lost, we end up being like these people who they saw when they first walked up. Who are just making a huge commotion. They actually had professional mourners back then where when somebody died, they would make, you know, that was their duty was to go make sure that the family didn't have to mourn by themselves. And they would go and help them with the mourning process by, you know, mourning loudly, we'll say, making a commotion. And, then, you know, it was, a, it was a blessing to them. But in a sense, mourning is one thing. And blessed are those who mourn. I think there's something to mourning where God has blessed us with the capabilities of the, to be able to cry. Like you're, you're, people are probably like, what? what do you mean it's a blessing to cry? It is a blessing to be able to cry. I don't know about you guys, but uh, most men in my life, and that uh, Mia has taught as well, I was taught that you don't show no emotion. You know, you know that's, not, that's not what men do. And I found out that was a farce because all it did is it caused me to be scared of my own self. Because part of being human is to have, be emotional, is to have feelings. Bless you. Is to be able to cry and to mourn. Because you, you could cry on the other side. You could cry probably when you're overjoyed. But you know, like I, I, for a long time, it was just so hard for me to cry. And when I finally gave my life over to Christ, you know, I ugly cried. For the first time in the public and everything. It was bad. You know, just, you know, I was just hoping nobody had a camera because that has been... But actually, I wasn't even thinking about that. I, I literally just, 
I threw it all to the side, surrendered, and before you knew it, I was crying. And I didn't even know why I was crying. But it was probably because I was holding it in for so long. I don't know if you guys have been holding in something in for so long. You know, you got to let it go and let God. Uh, that's right. Because, you know, he wants to take it from you because, you know, it's not meant for us to bottle it all up. Is it, is it called bottle up? I don't know. Hey, bottle it all up. You know, and there's all kinds of Mentos in there. Right when you open it, it's going to explode. <laughs> you you got you to gotta, gotta let it come out. You got to be genuine. You got you to gotta let it know. But he sees, he walks in and these people are just making this huge commotion. They're, they're people loudly crying and wailing. And, and, and he, he enters in and I love it because he almost gives them a chance of comfort, right? Mm -hmm. he, he reminds them like, guys, I don't know why you guys are crying like this. She, the little girl's but asleep. She's only sleeping. You know, it's funny because that is literally what Christians be telling the rest of the world when they're, or their, their loved ones are gone because we, 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 we believe that Hey, when, when, when we die, we're just going to sleep until he rises us up again. Amen. Until he raises us up again. We, like we die, but then we, we are raised. Yes. And so it's just but like if we went to sleep. Like just we just we just went to home, go home to be with the Lord. And it is it is crazy because when we tell people like that, is you know, hey, what if there's life after this. This isn't all there is. Like we, we, we don't die and then that's it. We, we go and have eternal life. We can go on to live forever. People would think we are crazy. We think there's like, are you believe in that whole heaven stuff? You believe in that, that hell stuff? And we as Christians got to say yes. Yeah. You can't believe in one without the other. Uh -huh. You, you got you to stand by that. Is if you believe in heaven, you got to believe in hell. And this is not that. There, this is not all there is. Like if you, if you die in your sin and you haven't given your life over to Christ, you go to hell. Yep. But if you have decided to give your life over to Christ in His gracious and mercy, by faith alone, He says we get to go what to be with Him forever in heaven. Amen. So I mean, dying is about as scared as going to bed. Have you guys ever been scared to go to bed? You been scared to go to bed? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, you must have an anxiety or something. I don't know. I, I get that. I get that. You're like, oh, if I go to sleep, I ain't waking up. But again, this, this, I used to have anxiety real bad. I used to be like just, you know, I don't know if it was the drugs or what, what it was when I was younger. But I, I have really bad anxiety to the point where I used to go to the doctors. And, you know, like I found out it wasn't even good to go to the doctors. All they gave you was a Sudafed and said, hey, you know, chill out. You just got to breathe. You know, easy for you to say, like, I'm not breathing right, you know, I'm dying. But then it wasn't until I came to the realization that if I died, so what? I belong to the Lord. If I live for Christ, if I die for Christ, it's for Christ. And as I just came to the knowledge of just knowing that I'm in God's hands and I'm okay, then all of a sudden I, was never, I wasn't scared to go to sleep. I was able to fall asleep. Now, and now I walk on my pillow. And, and when, I, when I close my eyes, I'm not worried about what's going to happen next. I'm just thankful that I get to, that I get to go to sleep, that I get to enjoy that moment. You know, 1 Timothy uh, 6, 11, it says, But you, O man of God, flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. He said, you old man of faith, right? Like a man of God, you think woman of God, right? Like that, that's the generation of you who have given your life over to God is saying, make sure that you are living a way that you are fighting the good fight. Yes. That you are not giving up. That you have, you've given your life over to him. And then you won't be scared of dying. Like he says, that's the idea of having a clear conscience. Not leaving things unintended. Like, I, like I, you know, I've done many of funerals, and not none of them are easy. But I tell you what, the ones that have done everything that they needed to do in their life, they are essentially more easier for the family. The ones that they know, like, oh, my aunt, man, she was a she, she's a Bible believer. She, she loved Jesus. You know what I mean? They just like knew without a doubt she was in heaven. Like it's just a different atmosphere in the funeral. Mm -hmm. People are they're literally celebrating her life, and they're just thankful to everything. But I've also been on the opposite spectrum where they didn't really know. 
Like, uh, like kind of like one of those things, like, I, I hope he knew Jesus. And you're kind of like, well, me too, right? Like, you know, I tell people, that's not for us to know. Best thing you can do is make sure that you know. We can't worry about nobody else's race. We can only worry about our own. Amen? Amen. So, so we need to pursue righteousness. We need to pursue godliness. We need to pursue faith. We need to pursue love and perseverance. Even when dogs are barking, we pay attention and pursue what it is. <laughs> I thought everybody's up. Is that anybody else? We all hear the dog. It's all right. Point it out. Be like, there's a dog out there barking. But, 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 but hopefully he's okay because we love little dogs and it's all right. But, but you know, like, but it doesn't matter how many witnesses there are or who's or what's going on. We live a godly life. And, and we, we're thankful to have a godly life. Yes. But he says, okay, well, you guys go. No more wailing. You know, you can sleep. And they're laughing. And he's like, I'm going to go ahead and do something for you guys right now. Because Jesus doesn't have to do this. And this is one thing I want to remind us. Is, and I'm going to say this as carefully as I can. But God does not have to heal us. God has already done enough by reconciling us to him. God does not have to make you feel better. I mean, sometimes it's in his will, and he does, and sometimes people get miracles, and it's an amazing blessing, but he doesn't have to because he is God. But he loves you nonetheless. If, she, if, if in this moment she didn't get raised to death or raised to life from the dead, she still would be in heaven with God and would be fine. Because when I read things like this, I can't help but remember that time when I prayed so hard that somebody was delivered from death. That I prayed so hard that this person would be able to go home. And then what happened is that person got to go home, they just didn't get to go home with me. Yeah, they got to go and be home with the Lord, but it hurt nonetheless. And my, and my, my, my first thing was like, why didn't you answer my prayer? God answers all prayers. Sometimes he just doesn't answer it the way you want. And that's okay. We need to have enough faith in him and enough uh, trust in him that even if he answers it the way we didn't want it answered, he's still good. And all the time he's good. Amen? Amen. But in 40 it says, they began laughing at him when he said that this girl was asleep. They laughed. He said, are you kidding Everybody said, putting them all out of it, he took along the child's father and mother and his companions, and he entered the room where the child was, and it, and it says that he went and grabbed her hand, and he said, Talitha kum, which translated, little girl, I say to you, arise, arise, get up. And, 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 and what did she do? She arose. She arose, and, and she just began to walk around, and people were astounded. They were like, what did she just do? Like, now she's walking around. She's just having a good time. Like, you know, it, it says that she was, she was even hungry. But I can imagine. I don't know what dying feels like, but maybe after you die, you're hungry. You know, I, I, don't, I don't understand that. But he says, uh, he inquired them, maybe you all should go get her some food because she's hungry. But, but, but where at one moment she was there, the next moment she was alive. And that's a miraculous miracle that the uh, Peter, John, and James get to see, and the parents get to see it. And I'm sure they want to tell everybody, but Jesus says, don't tell no one. But now we have a different mandate, because I don't know if you guys know this, but at one time we were dead in our sin. You were dead. But now that you have Christ, you're alive. Hallelujah. Now you have new life, and we do the actual opposite. He's not commanding us not to say something. He's actually commanding us what? To say something. In 2 Chronicles 20, 15, he says, he said, Listen, all Judah, the people of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, the Lord says to you, Do not be afraid or troubled because of these men, for the battle is not yours. It is God's. Amen. I mean, I know it's a hard thing to, to, to tell you guys to get up and believe, to arise and believe. Because I know sometimes it's hard for me to get up. But I'm telling you, when you get up and you, and you go, God will bless it. He'll go before you, and he'll essentially pave the way. And even when you need, he'll carry you through the threshold. But it takes us first to what? Only believe. 
If I can have the worship team come up, I'm going to read you guys a last bit of scripture. This comes from Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. It says, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I have been with Moses. I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous to be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn aside from it to the right or to the left so that you may be prosperous wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way successful and then you will be prosperous. Amen. And this is what I want to end with is, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be in dread or be dismayed. For Yahweh, your God, is with you wherever you go. Ooh, Amen. Can we arrive in this morning? All right. I'm going to close this in prayer if you'll stand. Um, and in the last song, if you feel led to sing with us or our brothers and si brothers or sisters will be up here to pray for you as well. Um, join us in singing or just be where you are and, and feel the Lord's presence in all that we're doing this morning, church. Um, Father God, thank you. Thank you that you bless us with uh, your breath in our lungs, Father God. Thank you that... We are able to be here, um, able to sing these songs and uh, hear the word, Father God. We thank, uh, we thank you for our pastor and for the leaders of our church who take the time to prepare the word, Father God, uh, whether it be uh, on Sunday or Wednesday uh, for Bible study, for the men's Bible study on Thursday or Friday for the women's Bible study. In everything that's done, Father God, we thank you for that leadership and the time that it's put in. Um, I just pray, Lord, that we we rise up and we uh, show our neighbors a new life in Christ. That we represent you well and represent the church well, Father God. Uh, please put it on our hearts to love on one another, to go through the week showing kindness and doing all things in love. And just, I pray for safe travels for each and every one here. And for those who couldn't be here, Lord, wherever they, they are at, whatever they're doing, please bless them and um, may they feel your presence. We pray this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.